Greetings you YouTubers, here is the guy with a Swiss accent, with a new episode around sensors and microcontrollers. In the first part of this long mailbag video, we ended with this overview over my current selection of ESP32 boards. Today you will find more ESP32 boards, amongst other interesting stuff. So let's continue with the mailbag. Next one. It was pressure sensors, but in reality it's not pressure sensors, it's load cells. And these are interesting load cells. They are quite small and we have four of them. And they look completely different to the last one. The last looked like that and you basically bend them to weight measure so you put you put the weight on here and you fix it here and here it's different with these. Here you put the pressure on these two arms here and then it should be pressed down. I already had a few of them but they were for, I think, 40 kilograms, which is quite a lot because you basically place them at all four areas. These are from personal scales and can be used for larger things, for example, beehives and stuff like that, where you really have a, a huge flat uh, wooden or metal sheet and put the whole thing on it. And uh, you see here, these are made a little bit different. They already, they already have a point mounted here, if you look at this. And this is not here, so I assume I have to add something here, basically to, uh, to take the pressure. Here it's uh, quite nicely made. But these are just for a few kilograms and uh, much more sensitive. These are really not very sensitive, but for high loads it's okay. But I wanted to have uh, smallest because usually I do not have, uh, I do not want to weigh uh, big loads. These are only half bridges, not as these. You see this, they only have three cables and these have four cables. And here you see how you have to connect them in a full bridge. You have the four and you have to connect them quite sophisticated and at the end you get four wires S plus, S minus, E plus and E minus as before with full bridges. Another big one. Some other ESP32 boards. So I hope I have now the full selection. It's incredible how many ESP2 boards appeared over the last month or so. I think I have to do an additional overview. This is a Geek Warm ESP32. It has only, the numbers are only here. It's a development board more or less, I think, with two buttons. No battery and it's named Easy Kit. <laughs> whatever this means. 38 pins, which is quite a lot compared to other, to other boards we saw before. The next one is an ESP32 dev kit. It has also 38 pins, I think, if I count it right. And it also has no battery and two of these buttons here. I think we will see that the, the difference between these boards is not really big because the brains basically is a similar one. Next one, to pay attention where I cut it because this is a sharp Swiss army knife and I do not want to destroy my precious goods, of course.
a board. This is a base plate for these X shields I showed you before. You can mount here a particular ESP32 board. Maybe there are also ESP8266 boards available in this format. They have two pins in a row here, or two pin rows here, and here you can mount two different X shields. I like this shield concept and uh, I use this also for educational purposes sometimes. It is quite easy for people to build nice things with these very nice board here with all the necessary connectors obviously. This was quite a lot of soldering here. All these different pins and here is now such an X shield and the good thing is you can here select the address or at least the pins. This was not uh, very good in the old shield system so this is is now better and you can now plug in for example for example this ESP with a display here and then one or two shields here you can stack them also if you want here with a LED it makes no sense to stack it because it has to be on top otherwise you don't see it if you would prob if you would stack another one on top and this anyway would make no sense because I have already an ESP32 here I would need another shield here this is also a possibility a similar principle you can also mount the microcontroller here and the shields here and they even have a small spare that uh, you can mount them like that quite nice and because they have two pin rows here you still have one to connect to your project if you want you can wire them like that and to connect it to to a different sensor or so. So it's quite a versatile concept thought through with these small details here where this is also a detail with a two pin instead of one pin. Next one very light very small again I think only chips. No nope, it is a module and it is a very small module. I think it is a IR sensor because it has a small opening here on the sensor. I have to check and tell you exactly what it is. It is not a IR sensor, it is a UV sensor and it has an I2C interface and it runs up to 5.5 volt but also on 3.3 volt. So it should be possible to connect it to the Arduinos or to the ESP32 and fortunately we have also a library for this VEML6070. For these I do not need a knife because they are already unpackaged and they are PCBs for ESP32 VROM modules. You can solder them on top here. If you remember I had already one in my tests and this was not a very nice one. I had to solder pull-up resistors, I had to solder um, some capacitors, I had to solder these, these two uh, switches also and the new version I think it's called 1.1 or so is now much nicer because it has the pull-up resistors, it has small buttons already soldered on and even I see here a small LED. The pinout is written very similar to this one here, a little bit smaller. For a guy like me this is not a good thing. I can read these much better but still I think 
this was necessary that the pull-ups are here because it's not uh, makes no sense that you have to to solder these pull-ups on on a on a PCB like that. I got a few of them, so I can do some deep sleep tests with these boards. I did not discover these boards myself. I saw them in the blog of Peter Scargill, and he said this is a very good thing. So I thought I also buy a few of them. They are really very very small touch sensors. They just have three pins, VCC, ground and output. They should work even through thin plastic or plexiglass. They are very similar to these switches. I think they even use the same chip but uh, they are much smaller and these also have an LED built in. These are come without LED so you are free to put the LED wherever you want and here you have the LED already mounted which is also a nice and it depends what you need but the function is more or less the same it has also three pins here if I remember right they are 5 volt and 3.3 volt I connected it now with a plus minus and with a switch and I have about 4 volts and now I try to touch it and you see it works without problem the only 3d printed PLA thing I have here for the moment as I said uh, my printer is uh, defective so I have this one here and I sticked it on the back and now let's try and it works. So definitely 2 mm PLA is ok. And here is the exact opposite. These are real mechanical switches. An assortment and frequent viewers of my channel know how I like assortments. And you see here oh, a little bit too much bent. So you can take this one here and put whatever colored button on it. A very nice touch point, very precise touch point. They are not very small but you can easily mount them because I like round buttons. I can produce much easier round holes than I can uh, produce rectangular holes even with the um, with the 3D printer at the end usually I finish the round holes with one of these step drills very convenient very precise and then you get a real nice hole usually I print it a little bit too small and then I use one of these to extend to the right diameter this is a must for every lab I think to have some of these or at least one probably this the bigger one step drills this one goes from 4 mm to 32 mm and this one goes from I think from 4 mm to 12 mm this came also from Banggood featuring tubes in different sizes from 1.5 mm to 9 mm and they are red. I already had black ones and a few reds and a few red in it here. Usually I have red as VCC and black as ground and then if I do heat shrinking I wanted also uh, to have a uh, red heat shrink tubes. And in addition I have these clear heat shrink tubes also in various sizes. This is very nice if you want to see what's in. For example if you have a sensor or something or a small assembly then it's, uh, it's good if you can look inside and then the clear is best. So now I'm equipped red, black and clear. And about two weeks ago I got this 
nice package here. Usually I do not get things through DHL, but this is something very special for me. It is directly from Espressif and they sent me two of their new boards. So you might think I should have already enough ESP32 boards. And you are probably right. By the way, I do not buy all these ESP32 uh, boards for me. Some of them are also for you, that you can decide which one you want to buy. So some of them are also just for the channel. But these I got free of charge and they are different to the other. First, they have no module on it. The ESP32 is soldered here. They have no visible antenna. The antenna is here. A very interesting concept. Never saw a three-dimensional antenna, but it looks like they used a three-dimensional antenna. And this ESP32 chip is a a special one is the newest addition to Espressif's lineup. It is a Pico and it has a built-in flash already. It is similar, a similar concept to the ESP8285 to save space and money also, I assume, for the manufacturers. They put everything in one chip and you do not need a flash chip externally. So we can expect in the next few months also boards or modules probably using this new, this new Pico chip. Here it's just a, develop, a development board with a normal voltage regulator, USB to serial and of course the two buttons here. ESP32 Pico core board version 3. And here is a kit for heart monitoring. Let's have a look at it. It is an AD8232 chip, quite a small chip, and the rest is just the supporting components and a plug here, 3.3 volt output and so on. And it's a heart rate monitor. And what came with it is a connector on one hand to the sensor and on the other hand to these plastic devices. They are sticky and they are sticked to the skin somewhere at the chest I assume and then this small chip should judge if I'm still healthy or not. It needs obviously three different electrodes. We will see if this works. Seems to be a real cheap price for such a device. It's about uh, it's less than ten dollars I think and uh, I'm really interested in the output of this one. Whether it measures only the heart rate or whether it measures more than just the heart rate. It seems it should measure a little more. It is ECG. Here it's not only heart rate monitor, it's cardiac monitor. Sounds really medical. I bought this because I'm interested in all sorts of sensors and uh, maybe you will see a video about that. Let's put it in this protective bag, otherwise might not work when we need it. And this is now the end of the second part of the largest mailbag I ever did. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye!